So, Bruce, we've had three propositions that were on the ballot. One passed, two didn't. And so we're having discussions of what does that mean or look like. Um, but those discussions can um, have a tremendous shock factor I'm worried about. Uh, tell me more about like what, what are going to be your next steps for administration to bring to the board. Yeah, thanks, Trish. It's great to be here with you this morning. Um, we've had some time together as a board and team of eight this weekend, um, but it's really important that we understand what happened in November when those two propositions failed. And so we're spending a lot of time talking with community members, exploring our staff. Uh, we have surveys out, we have a thought exchange out, we visited with board members, and we've spent some time this weekend talking about that particular issue. We also know that um, with the population and survey analysts demographic study that mm -hmm. students are still coming to the district in the first five years at least um, of, of the projection. And so we have to digest this dilemma that we have. We have students coming um, and we failed the bond. So what are our next steps? I think it's really important that we explore all of the options that are on the table. And so those are the things that we're starting to have conversations about. So the board has said, we want, we want to explore these options with y'all. Let's talk about rezoning. Tell me, though, what does that mean when we say we want to talk about rezoning? As a parent, should I be, like, concerned and go, okay, where, where do I need to line up now for middle, elementary? I mean, do I need to figure all out the details right now, or what happens at this stage? Yes, yeah, so I just want to make sure that everybody understands that we're not actually doing any rezoning yet. We're just conducting exercises to explore what that rezoning might look like if that was something that we did. This is different from what the district has done with rezoning in the past. Usually we've only done it for the opening of a new school. In this case, we're looking at what does a district-wide rezoning look like because of the problem that we have, that we have facilities in our district that are declining in enrollment and creating capacity and other areas of our district that are booming in enrollment and, and we need capacity. And so how do we balance the capacity with the ha that we have already with the capacity that we need in the future? So the administration is putting together an exercise that we will be presenting to the board this Thursday night. Um, we will have that information in the board packet for the board to examine and also the public to look at um, by this evening. Exercise, right? I'm seeing air quotes around the world, exercise. What exactly does exercise mean? That's a really great question. So the district has engaged in a process of developing a couple of different scenarios for balancing enrollment across the district. So we have this really strong enrollment up in the north part of the district and declining enrollment in the south. So how do we maximize the use of our facilities um, and still make sure that we're meeting the needs of each and every child? Um, so essentially what the scenario does is domino bumps the attendance zones down from the north to the south. And so we're sending kids further south to utilize the existing capacity that we have in buildings. Um, to avoid building new buildings in the north wherever possible. Um, that's not going to be entirely possible, but it certainly is uh, an exercise that we want to explore. It is an exercise, and a different exercise, because when we, at, as board and district, have gone out to the community, we'll talk about things of maximizing, like, feeder pattern or maximizing your neighborhood school. This is a different focus, then, that we're looking at. Correct. Right? Now we're really making sure that we maximize the use of our facilities and balancing enrollment across the district. And this map that we're looking at, or that we're going to talk about on the 16th, isn't the only way. It is just kind of looking at if that was the only goal, this is what would happen. That is correct, because there are a lot of implications for doing this kind of a, a re district-wide rezoning. And so we have looked at some of those impacts, but we haven't analyzed all of them yet. And so what's the benefit then? Why look at this map? Now, I know boards asked and the community's been asking about it, but from administration, if you are thinking about um, what's the best option, right now I think what I'm seeing it as administration is we're trying to work together to find all the solutions coming together and coordinate, right? Right. So if we can rezone and move students into existing capacity in our facilities, then we can actually reduce the number of new facilities that are required in the district. 
on the flip side of that, that does require us moving students more than once mm -hmm. um, in their school career. So over the next three to five years, that could mean a move of two or three times for an individual student. Bruce, the options then we have, we're talking about rezoning, but as we're talking about there are other exercises and, and discussion points, what else is on the table right now? Right, so the district-wide rezoning is one way of solving this problem. Um, the other options that are available to us are to go back out to bond again um, for new facilities and renovating existing facilities. Uh, we could do that either in May of 22, November of 22, or even May of 2023. Um, the other options exist are adding portables to existing campuses to create more capacity. That does require us to uh, have enough M&O dollars to do that, so we would possibly have to cut other things um, to make sure that we can manage enough portables to, to meet the, the growth needs in the district. Or there's a possibility of doing a combination of all of those things. So we might not have to do a complete district-wide rezone. We may be able to do pieces of it um, in combination with portables at various sites. Um, so there are different things that we're going to talk about as we go forward. So there seems like there's a disconnect a bit because we keep talking about facilities but our teachers and staff are wanting to know what are we going to do about them is that in our exercise on rezoning how does that all work together I think there is a direct connection um, between the, the quality of our staff and the quality of their job life inside the district and and new facilities work um, one of the consequences of not building new facilities is that our schools become overcrowded um, and that's not a pleasant environment to work in necessarily. Um, the other problem is that, you know, it is different for staff to work inside a portable than it is to work inside the main building and having to go in and out of the main building to the portables. Um, I, th I think there is a connection between the INS dollars on the debt side um, that we're talking about with bonds and facilities and our daily operation funds on the M&O side. Um, although those tax rates are separate, they do balance each other out, and there is there are ways for us to combine those together at some point, um, and we have to make sure that we're talking about that um, in parallel to this facilities conversation. Right, because it gets confusing. You've got two different, I guess you would, if you would, buckets of money. And one of them is the one that we're going to really be looking at. We talk about the zoning exercise. It's really looking at more the INS dollars. If you have a bond that didn't pass, then what would you do for your facilities? The other bucket of money is really where we're going to be talking a lot about our workforce. What can we do as far as pay? How do we do you know, the day-to-day? -day? And that's a different bucket of money, but that's not in the exercise that's coming to the board when we talk about facilities. Is that correct? That is correct. And so but I don't want our community to think we're not listening either, right? Those conversations on workforce, I know the board's asked. We're going to continue to have those discussions as well. Those are going to come up in the budget conversations that we're having as we start into the next budget cycle um, because we know there is a, a, a shortage on the M&O side in our district, and we're projecting that as we go forward, and how we manage that is going to become critically important. We can use the debt side of the district to help us if we do the right things, um, but we have to make those decisions together with our community. So help us to understand what's going to happen on Thursday night at our board meeting. So on Thursday, December 16th, we're going to talk about the exercise, as you've laid out, that is coming before us. Um, we will have opportunity for citizen comments. Citizens can come and speak. That's an excellent way, but not the only way you can speak to the board. Um, of course, there's emails, let's talk. Additionally, the board's going to be doing a board cafe um, on January 6th where we can actually get out there and listen to the public. Our communities talk so much about wanting to have the board out there, and it looks like this will be a great opportunity for us to start this. I think one of the things we really need to hear about, too, is if we're communicating effectively. So some of this is complicated, and, yeah. and there are no easy answers necessarily. Um, so if people are unsure about what's coming next, we'd love to hear that. Like, help us to understand how we're communicating and if we're doing an effective job. Yes, and the other thing that would be tremendous, when trustees get emails, sometimes we'll get an email that says, well, I don't like this. What do you like is also helpful. Give us your solution or what your thought is. We start pairing that. That allows us to kind of be able to make more traction with the comments that we're getting, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Well, thank you for taking the time uh, this weekend and as board president for your leadership, we really appreciate all the work that you do. Thank you. Um, the board is ready and we're going to keep doing our meetings and we will stay engaged doing research and homework and I am sure we will stay busy over the break as well. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>